Now you put the squeeze on. Squeeze him forever. Don't squeeze him hard, squeeze him forever. Last week was the interview with the Pulitzer. This week, the interview with the Punisher. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Adler.TV, where every Thursday you can find a new episode with a new guest in a new location. This week's guest is Brandon McCaffron. He's the owner and head instructor at 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu, Mixed Martial Arts, and Kickboxing School in Decatur, Alabama. I want you to remember, in Jiu-Jitsu, you aren't punching or kicking. You're using chokes and limb locks to subdue your opponent. In fact, if you don't know anything about Jiu-Jitsu, I suggest you go back and listen to my very first podcast, before listening to this one, because we're going to talk about belt rankings and fighting techniques on a little more advanced level. I've only been doing jujitsu for one year, so it's not that advanced. And I know this is my second jujitsu themed guest, but we talk about family, health, business, New Year's resolutions. So I drove north from Birmingham to 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu to cater. And after Brandon had no problem whatsoever, absolutely destroying me on the mat, we sat down for a chat. The blood that I'm tasting in my mouth is from my lips and gums and tongue or from my internal organs. I'll find out later. I just got done getting my butt kicked by a phenomenal jujitsu practitioner and teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon McCaffron. What's up, man? Howdy. Thank you so much for doing this podcast, man. Yeah, man. Super happy to have you. It was uh, a real big surprise for me to, because there was a wreck on the interstate on the way here. So they shut down the interstate both ways and I'm driving and I'm in the middle of nowhere. I've, I mean, I've, I've got no service and I accidentally closed the maps app on my phone. And now you no phone service. So you can't pull it back up. And so I can't pull it up. So I'm literally lost and dr trying to just dr find service. That's what I was doing. The sun is going down. I've got an Auburn tag on the front of my car. Oh, you're going to die. A lot of things were stacked against me, yeah, my friend, in making it looking here. Good. <laughs> but like I said, I was in the middle of nowhere and I pull up to this place and you have this amazing warehouse filled with people that are pumped about jujitsu man yeah it's pretty cool right like it's amazing in decatur alabama like we only have fifty thousand people in the whole city and most of them train here <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> So, for the uninitiated, you teach 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu specifically. What is what is 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu? Uh, we just practice without the gi. We just don't ever wear the, the gi. The gi, for if, if you're watching and you don't know what that is, that's the traditional uniform. Because MMA is not done with the jacket on, um, we dropped it for our training as well. Just to try to keep our guard as close to what you're going to experience in a real fight as possible. Yeah, I've done nothing so far. I've only been doing jiu-jitsu for one year, uh, studying at Lionheart Jiu-Jitsu Academy in Birmingham under George. That's what old George. That's just with George Webby. Yes, yeah. sir. He speaks very highly of you, by the yeah, way. I hear George is a really solid practitioner, man. So I haven't got to roll with him yet, but hopefully he'll beat me up one day. Yeah, man. He's, uh, I feel like my time's coming. This can't be too far away. <laughs> uh, roll, rolling with him feels like you're rolling with like Robocop or something, like a robot man. <laughs> rolling with you feels like rolling with like a chimpanzee. Like <laughs> it's, it's way stronger than this body should be kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. You, you don't have a, like, no, no offense, but you don't have like a crazy big physique. No, none taken. Yeah. Yet there are these guys that are, heavyweights in the ufc coming to you for advice on how to how to kill somebody and and that's amazing man yeah it's kind of weird it's a very surreal feeling honestly because i just got started in jujitsu because i was fat to be honest with you like my wife signed us up she she sat me down on the couch she's like listen this ain't gonna cut it i signed us up for martial arts I said, okay i guess we're gonna do that then that's amazing yeah so what do you weigh right now and what did you weigh then when i started jujitsu was 228 pounds okay um the lowest I ever got at competition weight was 155, and right now I'm dead on 170. Okay. So this is this is pretty comfortable walking weight for me. Uh, I've actually dropped about 15 pounds in the last couple of months. I was keeping it a little thicker earlier. You've been working hard. I gotta keep it thick, thick for the ladies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, you've been working 
working unbelievably hard. You're you're cr absolutely crushing it on Instagram. You got a, a full time video guy. Uh, yeah, we got Keelan, a whole team. A video team. Yeah, yeah. that's Keelan. Keelan, so not he's Keelan. on Instagram. He's conscious Keelan on Instagram, and he's kind of the uh, the head of the media team. And then Keith over here works on the media team as well. And then um, we have a girl named Fabiana, a little Brazilian chick that works on the media team too. So she runs um, Brandon MC dot Brazil. And we're going to make like a whole Portuguese version of all of my internet presence. And so we're running ads to Brazil right now. Oh, I've seen, I follow Brandon M MC dot yeah. Brazil. I follow that. But yeah. Account. There's a, there's a, it's amazing. a website coming behind that too. That's a, that's awesome, man. It's, cool. it, it's a, it's a language. Jiu-Jitsu is a international language. I could go to a uh, academy in Brazil and you know, I'd get my butt kicked, obviously, but I would be speaking, you know, I would be speaking that, that, that language. It's, it's an amazing thing. I just did that. I was in Sao Paulo, September. I went down there with, um, with my friend Ben, uh, Ben Saunders. He was fighting on the UFC card down there and we were cornering him and we got to go roll every day, like twice a day. We went and rolled at an academy in Brazil and yeah, you're right. Like I don't speak Portuguese very well at all. I speak enough to like find out a good place to eat and find out where the bathroom is. You know what I'm saying? Is it Banyo still? <laughs> yeah. Is it? Okay. Sana uh, oh, now I can't remember it. Now I got caught. What is, <laughs> El Banyo. 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 El Banyo. Banyo. Okay. Yeah. The difference in rolling in the real difference, it wasn't that the jujitsu level was higher, I wouldn't say. It's that every round is a black belt because there's 20 of them on the mat. Whereas like here at our academy, we got a ton of people training here. We got like 200 people training here. We only have two black belts in the house. And really there's not a lot of black belts in the state of Alabama still. We're still kind of in my friend, Chris Herzog. Uh, he always says that Alabama's like, uh, 1983. You, you opened this Academy when? 2010, February of 2010. Was there a Academy anywhere in within a hundred miles? Um, there were jujitsu academies, but not within driving range of me. Yeah. And so I was only a blue belt when we, when we started 10th Planet Decatur. I got my blue belt from Eddie. I got all my jujitsu ranks from Eddie, even though I did some other martial arts training before. Um, I got all of my jujitsu ranks from Eddie. I got my blue belt in 2009 or 10. Whatever year that was, then we put the sign up outside. It wasn't in this location, but that's that was the year. And so... Yeah, we were just scrambling. But no, there was no 10th planet in the entire southeastern United States at that point. And then they're popping up all over the place now. It's crazy. I think we've got something like 110 locations worldwide. It's insane. Yeah, I think in the future, everybody's going to know jujitsu. I mean, the way that it, the, that sounds it cool, keeps man. going. Yeah, it's it's uh, it sounds cool to me too, man. <laughs> You mentioned your wife. Um, I've, I've listened to a couple of your podcasts, and your wife is on there, and she's talking about jujitsu. She's a brown belt? Yeah, she, well, she started training the day I started, and she's been my number one training partner since day one, so she's a beast, yeah. See, when I try to do jujitsu with my wife, she's saying things like, you know, don't touch me. How mm -hmm. many times do I, I, I'm not attracted to you. How many times do I have to tell you that? You know, that's, that's the, con that's how our conversations go. It makes a lot of sense now that I'm with you. How did you get your wife in? Like how, how did no, she, she got in? me in? Wow. Okay. Like she sat me down on the couch and said, we are going to train. I'll train with you because I don't want you to stay overweight and unhealthy. She was like, I don't want to die. I didn't marry you so I could be a widow for the last 20 years of our marriage. So let's shape up. You're ridiculous right now. And she gave me a little real talk and I had to get up off the couch. And it, it'll get you in shape, man. I've, I've shown videos to people of, you know, me rolling, other people rolling, that kind of thing. And they're like, is that exercise? Is that hard? <laughs> and the first like six months I was doing this, I went home and would just, just soak in the tub for so 30 brutal. minutes at a time like it's especially that beginning learning curve man you are getting smashed it is i i compare it to like being in a telephone booth and somebody's trying to kill you you know like <laughs> that's you're, about right you're just getting smashed i'm in a pieces. glass case of emotion <laughs> it's amazing and so yes it is so unbelievably hard it's been you know as far as the cardio uh, the stamina all that it's been a, a huge 
uptick for me. And what it does for you mentally and emotionally too, yeah. like teaching you to like stay calm under duress, to be patient and look for a efficient answer rather than an emotional immediate answer that'll just solve the problem in the moment, but doesn't really fix anything. Just takes the pressure off of my face, but I had to give you my arm or my neck in order to do that. So yeah. Um, you know, the name Josh Waitskin, you familiar with this name? Mm -hmm. Josh Waitskin, um, did you ever see the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or chess. read the book? Yeah. So Bobby Fischer was like the American chess hero. Josh Waitskin is the subject of that movie, Searching for Bobby Fischer. He's the kid. Okay. So he's the, like, whatever it is at that time in the movie, like the nine year old chess prodigy. He grows up and becomes like super high level chess player at the, I don't think he hit like the grandmaster level, but. He, he was like world championship playing legit dudes in chess. And by the age of like 23, he had totally burned out. And he moved on. He just dropped chess for a while and moved on and started doing uh, push hands Tai Chi. And he won the world championship in three years. He went from no training to the world championship in Taiwan in three years. And then he went on to become Marcelo Garcia's first Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. And what he says in that book, and he wrote a book called The Art of Learning. And what he says in that book is that how you learn anything is how you learn everything. And he says that his experience as a chess player is what allowed him to excel so quickly in these other endeavors that really on the outside, on the surface, they weren't related at all. And so I, I think about that. How you learn anything is how you learn everything. I think about that a lot because for me, that jujitsu is the thing that I use to understand this problem better or to see a way out of this situation better or to be more efficient in this part of my life and this part of my business or this aspect of marketing or whatever. So the process of learning something is the same regardless of what you do. And jujitsu is a great way to learn how to learn because every night you're presented with problems in real time and you have to come up with an efficient solution or you lose the game and you get immediate feedback for the immediate consequence. Yes, there's immediate consequence for bad decision making. And so it's a great place to learn how to learn because you get feedback right away. It's it's opened my world up, honestly, Str straight up. It's opened my world up. I, I view the world differently after this year of studying. And I, I've been yeah, going you have like a, a new week, problem you know? solving filter now. Yeah. You know, that's what it, that's what I think of it as. You, you ever see that documentary Choke with Hicks and Gracie? Uh -uh. You've seen that? No, no, no. All right, it's on YouTube for free. He says in there, he says that um, jujitsu is the way that he understands the world. Like if you take away jujitsu, you take away the way that he sees, you take away his vision. He said it'd be worse than you cut off both my legs. You know, it's, it's his lens. It's, it is a lens yeah. that you can kind of approach a problem or approach stress. The art of learning that's in my list of books to read. I've got to get better at you reading. You got to get I, don't, I, No, 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 don't read it. Get the audiobook. Okay. Josh <laughs> Waitskin reads the audiobook okay. himself. Perfect. On your podcast, I think I might have heard you say also uh, kind of along those lines, the way you do anything or is is how, how you, you do, do anything do, is how you do everything. Yeah. yeah. And it's and you said how you do anything is how you do everything. And I get I got out of bed that morning and threw my shirt on the ground. And I thought about that, man. Pick that junk up, Yeah, didn't you? man. Yes. Dude, yeah. I'm like, dude. That makes me super happy. How you do anything is how you do everything, dude. And you're, you're going to start your day slacking, you know? I'm trying not to hit that snooze, but man, I wake up so oh. early for my job. But man, that snooze, it'll kill you. It'll, it, it kills, it's, it ruins the schedule for the whole day. It'll mess man, you up, you dude. Know? Well, it's okay to, I not, listen, I, I'm a snooze master, <laughs> but I ain't snoozed in a long time because it will, it's your first loss of the day. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I lost the alarm you clock. Lost, Straight out yeah. the gate, you're losing. Dude, yeah. you can't have that. I got to ask you some questions. Hold on a second. Sure, sure. Tell me about uh, your jujitsu training. I want to hear how you got started and all that. Okay, truth be told, man, like a whole lot of other people, um, I was listening to Rogan. He's talking about jujitsu, and he's saying this is the basis for self-defense. Uh, this is a great way for a small guy to be able to take out a bigger guy. Um, it's, 
you know, it's, it's really, it's great for training in that you can do it full tilt every single day and not get brain damage. So that's, that, that's it, man. I was just like, all right. And last year I was like, this is something I, I need to do. I, I mean, I occasionally work out. I occasionally run. Uh, this is something I need to really lock myself into. My wife's boss actually takes takes jujitsu and she was kind of just talking about it how, how i was wanting to do it and he was like he recommended this place and it turned out to be george webby's lionheart jujitsu academy man nice. and I, he I, landed in a good spot right off the bat i got in and uh my dad's a music minister at a church oh. and and webby um does a lot of faith-based stuff at the end we'll, we'll spend the first you know hour and in 10 minutes trying to kill each other and then we spend the last five minutes praying for each other you know it's oh, just interesting a real quick kind of like all right everybody up i know we just spent this last hour learning how to to break each other's arms let's pat each other on the back kind of thing so that's been great for me too man because as a as a minister's kid it's real easy to get burnt out on the whole church thing you know it's fully aware so this is it, the the lion has been a great place for me to be in that it's it challenges me uh physically mentally and then at the end, it also challenges me spiritually, man. So it's it's been it's been great, man. It's nice, it's man. a really cool. George thing. George needs to clip that and put it on his website. <laughs> that was a good good testimony. We talk trash here, though. Oh, we, don't be, we don't be praying. We just we <laughs> yap, da, 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 just going at each other. Talk about let's talk about pressure. Top okay. top pressure game. That's something that it took me forever to even realize what was happening, but. I, especially at the beginning, man, when you're not used to getting your legs in the way, having your legs in the way is so important. I'd find myself laying Crucial. flat on my back with my legs flat on the ground and just not understanding why I'm getting just absolutely destroyed. It's because you got no guard, man. You got, you got no fence. You got no wall. You know, build a wall, build a wall. You've heard that before. You got to build your own wall. <laughs> you do have to build your own wall. So, I, I mean, I, I would tap just from being out of breath. You know, a guy is just... A guy's just on my ribs. I can't get him off, and I can't breathe. I feel like my nose is bobbing underwater, and then it just goes. And that's, that's something I didn't even know about. That's something I didn't even know about a year ago, man. Th that's my favorite way to tap somebody, is just being on top of them in a smothering way. Like, I don't even care about the submission, to be honest with you. I just want you to be unhappy. Gosh. That's my favorite. And it, it, it's so it's, it's such an unhappy place. It's just body weight distribution and learning to relax, though, honestly. Like... It's, there's, it really has nothing to do with squeezing or being strong or having the right move or whatever. It's not a technique. It's a way of doing things that makes you heavy. It's being able to relax and deflect. And then all of a sudden, my arm that I was using to push you away from me is now off to the side, way out exposed, and you could you can grab it and, do, and, and break it, or you can just keep sending my arm that direction yeah i'll just i'll just discard it most of the time just all right that's out of the way now i got a clearer path to your head which is that's where the good stuff lives <laughs> you know? yeah a lot of people don't realize that as we do this uh all, all this stuff like once you get to my head and once you put that pressure on and if i don't tap if i fall asleep if you let go i will wake up but yes. a lot of people don't realize if you keep it on I die. Yeah, you will die. It's simulated murder, it is, what we're doing every night. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people, I don't think, understand that that's the level of of deadliness that we're learning. You know what, man? You know how when you first started, well, you're just still a year in, yeah, so I bet yeah. you still get this all the time. Your mom be like, now what do you do now? You, how's karate going? Are you doing that zizitsu? <laughs> you know that <laughs> right, one? Right, right, right. That is everybody else yeah. that doesn't train jujitsu. That's what they think it is. Now, what is it? Wrestling? Y'all wrestling in there? Sure. This was my first time to do no gi. Ever. Ever. You've never rolled without the gi. Never, ever That's rolled crazy without a gi, man. So that was, it was like, you know, grips that I thought was, were great and solid and secure, gone. Mm -hmm. Soup. And I feel like, um, you know, it used to be, it's not really this way anymore, but it used to be, especially when I first started, there was a big division between people who train gi and people who train no gi. And um, I would always hear people say, well, you have to wear the gi if you want to be better at no gi. You have to do it. What I figured out pretty early on is that guys who would only train gi and then come in and do a round of no gi or a round of MMA or something like that, that they seem to get lost even more quickly because there's techniques that open up like 
leg locks are all legal. Um, neck cranks and stuff like that are legal. You can reap the knee now. Um, wrist locks are good for white belts, toe holds, whatever. Everything's cool. We're good to go. And you don't have any handles. So now you got to climb this glass building with no handles. If you're not used to it, it changes the grips dramatically and it changes the speed of the game. If you, if you don't have something to hold on to, you start moving fast in response because you don't know how to hold. But it's like climbing a rock. It's like free climbing a rock, you know, versus maybe uh, a rappelling, or, yeah, rappelling it, up the same mount because you got stuff you got to hold run. on to. You got to find the handles as they exist in nature instead of an artificial handle that's built into the to the game. If that makes sense. For sure, for sure. It was definitely faster. I'm a I'm a small, fast guy. So I think I was able to make that, you know, transition. But I still got got my butt kicked by uh, all your all your peeps, man. So you're, you're doing a great job. <laughs> it's a tough room, dude. This is yeah, a tough man. room to roll in. You mentioned being a corner man. What's it called? Cornering. Yeah, corner man, corner. Yeah. Okay. For some some guys in the UFC, who mm-hmm. who have you trained that that fights in the UFC? Um, so none of the guys that are directly underneath me are in the UFC. So I should make that pretty clear. Yes. Um, but I'll come in and help guys with their camp sometimes, or, um, just work with a guy over the course of a week or a weekend or something like that. But right now I'm working with Eric Anders, who's a 185er in the UFC. So middleweight, he's a, um, very hot prospect. He's doing very well in the UFC. And then there's Walt Harris, yeah. and he's a heavyweight, and he just beat Arlovsky, so he's he's got to watch it, or he's going to end up on the fast track to the title if he's not careful. So I'm sure he's very concerned about that. And then I've worked with um, I got a buddy named Ben Saunders who fights in the UFC, and uh, we've worked together a lot. And then I have another friend, uh, Cole Miller. Well, he's um, he was like a what. How many times he cold fight? 21, something like that. 21 times in the UFC, something like that. And we've done a lot of work together. Um, and then just a bunch of just random dudes, like once or twice over the years. But Eric and Walt are the ones that I see on a weekly basis. And, like, I have a direct influence on their game, I would say. Yeah, I, I follow both of those guys on Instagram. Really good dudes. Eric Anders is a former football player for the Alabama Crimson Tide. He led the team in tackles and forced a key fumble in the 2009 National Championship game. Walt Harris played basketball at JSU and recently defeated Andre Arlovsky at UFC 232. Both Eric Anders and Walt Harris currently fight in the UFC and train at Spartan Fitness in Birmingham, Alabama. They are unbelievable in their work ethic. Every day it's... A thousand reps of this, five hundred of that, and then and that's in the morning, and then they're training with you at night. Uh, it's amazing, man, and it shows you how important that ground game is in the UFC. I mean, you you can strike and punch all all you can be the best at that, but if somebody takes you to the ground and you don't know what you're doing, you're screwed. Yeah, it's trouble. I should be real clear too, though. Like I am not a fighter myself. Sure, I'm terrible. Sure, sure. At striking, I'm terrible at wrestling. I'm like just a specialist. I'm just a, like a dorky little dude <laughs> who got real excited about jujitsu. That's great, so. Man. My job is not to teach nobody how to fight. Let me be real clear about that. I don't know nothing about no fighting, really. That's a little disingenuous, of course. But my job is to tighten up. So like I come and sprinkle jujitsu details like this, like chocolate sprinkles. Yeah, dude. I'll just be putting sprinkles. Sending somebody in to the ring you're the corner guy how because you you're you're a corner guy in jiu-jitsu tournaments i'm sure all yeah for sure it's got to be a different crazy level feeling of sending somebody into that ufc ring because it's it's your you you here you have this machine that has been working to train to to learn to to break people and they're going in to fight the somebody who's been working just as hard Maybe harder. We maybe, don't know. Maybe harder. Right. How how does that feel, man? To, to send somebody into that UFC I, ring? Do you do you get nervous? Do you feel like you're gonna throw up? Cause I almost want to say I hate it. I almost want to say that I hate it. Yeah. But I don't because I love it. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I don't want it to be happening. I would rather watch the fights from the outside. I don't like 
oh, you're my friend. I don't want you to fight. Please don't fight. Why are you fighting? Right. This is ridiculous. You could do any, you could do something else. Oh, well, this is all you care about. Okay, well then let's make sure you do it right. That's the way I feel about it. I, I like watching it on the outside. I do not necessarily like being involved in it from that aspect, but I love it. But you love it. Man. But I love it. Yeah. So I, I know that sounds ridiculous and I don't know that I can describe it and, and uh, put it into words any better I than that. I think you just did. Yeah. That's awesome. It's like uh, when you were um, absolutely destroying me just now, like I'm, you know, hung out to dry on a clothesline here and that was miserable. That was physically painful. That was a rough, tough time. You know what I'm saying? And I hated it in that moment. I was like, this sucks. I hate this. But afterwards you're like, okay. And, and before you're like, I love doing this. I love doing this. Don't most things that are worthwhile feel that way though? Like that's what people say about running. I, I just hear them say it because I ain't running. No, no. I learned to fight so I don't have to run no more. You know what I'm saying? Fight or flight, fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm out on the flight part. That's too much for me. But yeah, that's what they say about running. Like, oh, it's the best feeling ever. I guess, man. It must be. It must be great because there's yeah. no way it's worth it to just run and not have something awesome at the end. <laughs> yeah, they're like running and crying and their toes are bleeding and stuff. I'm like, okay, you're like, you're more intense than me. I ran a thousand miles yesterday. Don't talk to me. No. I don't want you to talk to me. We don't want to be friends. I did run a mile today. I'm doing a, a thing where- What was chasing you? Uh, my, myself, man. <laughs> <laughs> my own myself, fear. My, myself. I, uh, I'm trying to do a mile every day this year. and I think that's a good policy. I've missed uh, I missed two days. I've made up the mile the next day. Uh, so I'm, I'm down to one mile. But every other day I've done it. And that's a big, you know, that's, that's a big challenge for me, man. So, you know. Do you have a time scheduled that you're going to do it every day? It's just when I can. Then it's not going to last. Dang it. Dang it, Brandon. I'm right. You're right, man. You're right. You got to book that junk in. Make it make it count give yourself some consequence if it don't go down otherwise you're not going to make it a year you're not going to make it another month yeah the uh the one day i missed it's because i was working editing trying to get one of these podcasts done and i worked until 12 15 and i was like it's already tomorrow i've already missed it you it know? ain't tomorrow till you go to bed dude yeah you're right buddy that's that was an excuse man you're right it Dang ain't it. tomorrow till you go to bed you could have got up and done it man. <laughs> you're right man you're right is it did you make, give yourself a rule you got to run a mile that's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, well, then you should have run that mile, man. I, know, man. I hope I, you're happy with yourself. Chris. All right, all right. So, I, starting tomorrow, no excuses, scheduled time. I am taking a picture of the time. Oh, that's good. Every, every day. Give you know? yourself some habits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't even think, you just need some habits around stuff. I have to do that for sure. Like, we just got done. We all wrote our schedules out, like our personal schedule, not our work schedule. Like, wake up at 6. Like, I wrote the whole thing out. Wake up at 6.30 have breakfast, drive to pick up Keelan, go to Bur- da, 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 all the way down, family time, social media time, et cetera, uh, study time, whatever, but it's all booked in. Nice. Right. Just to build the habits that I want built for this new year, you know? Yeah, man. I got to do better. And I am doing better this year. I've I've noticed that in if you go on your iPhone under settings, I think it's like time. On oh, the screen time thing? Yeah. 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 It sends me a report like every week and I almost kill myself every time I see it. Golly, I know. I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm having to put usually. like 15 minute uh, limits on, a, on pretty much everything. It's just like, all right, remind me in 15 minutes to get off of this thing because... It's so easy to lose a half an hour just like that. If you play with the the news feed, it is. Yeah. I've gotten to where I don't really use the news feeds too much anymore, so I don't get lost in social media like I used to. I just interact with my notifications and DMs. Yeah, yeah. That keeps me from getting as lost. Nice. But I, I couldn't. I got to the point where I was like, I can't keep up with the comments and the notifications. I need help. Yeah. Or or stop. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. That that news feed, that timeline, whatever. It there's no end to it. By the way, you can scroll no. and scroll and scroll, and it feels like you're going for something you know but there's nothing there never reach it though there's man there's nothing there no. man one last question for you the oh and then we definitely want to give toehold flip flops a shout out oh shoot <laughs> that's an oh. amazing sponsor by the way dude that guy have you got any of those no yet? no no i gotta get some let me see if i can get you hooked up <laughs> toe underscore hold on instagram okay there you I go i think he just runs it in the dms anyways sure sure so it's all custom made stuff but he's he's out of vegas he used to work for apple like he used to ma- do something in the management with apple and he just was like oh man 
awesome. I flip love their flop. customer service model. I should do something I want to do with their customer service ideas. So that's kind of what he did. And uh, he's a smart guy. He's doing, and he's a hard worker too. Good nice. guy. Eddie Bravo. Uh-oh. Is, this is going to get ugly. I know, man. So you mentioned Eddie Bravo. He is the one that's giving you your belt rank. So. Yeah, so I got all my jujitsu ranks from Eddie. That is one thing, one really weird thing I noticed in the no-gi environment here. I'm used to seeing a white belt on a guy, a blue belt on a guy, a purple belt on a you guy. You can size them up a little bit yeah, ahead of time. Man. Yeah, ahead of time. You can kind of know what you're getting into before a roll, yeah, before you didn't a know spark. what you were walking into I had no here. idea, man. I kind of like that. It's kind of like... If I if I go in against a purple belt, I'm like this guy should beat me. But if I don't know he's a purple belt, it's like you don't give him the same respect, which is exactly what you should do. Yeah, yeah. If you treat him like he's a grown man, just like everybody else you slap hands with. They're yeah. all grown the same. There you go. You know, it's because no man no man is unbeatable. But if you start like respecting that belt a little too much, it can for sure it can mess with you. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know if I should be going this hard with this guy. Hey, man. Go, go hard, go hard, go hard, or or don't whatever, but don't not do it because he's a certain rank. Yeah, yeah. or don't accept defeat because oh he's a purple belt. He's going to beat me anyway. He got me. Yeah, exactly, dude. It's not it's not an acceptable way to live. No, oh, that guy's got more than I got. Of course, he's doing well. <laughs> whatever, hustle up, dig deep, let's go. Nice, Eddie Bravo is the patriarch or whatever you want to call it of Ted Planet Jiu Jitsu. Yep. Because he kind of sits as the head of the organization, but it's not like an, um, a franchise or whatever. Like, he lets us do it how we want to do it. That's the whole thing with Eddie. It's like, you don't have to play Eddie's game. He wants you to, his coach didn't make him do it the way, you know, his coach was Jean-Jacques Machado. Jean-Jacques has no fingers on his, I believe it's his right hand. I don't know if you're aware of that or not, if you know who he is. But his hand is like this. That's all he's got, and he's gripping the gi like this and stuff. Because he can't grab the gi so well, he developed a really different game than all of his, all his brothers are black are like super high level black belts. He grew up in the Gracie household in Brazil, but he couldn't do a lot of the same techniques. So he started developing a, a real overhook style game. No gi, he didn't have any problems because he wasn't. All of a sudden, when it switched to no gi, he had grips and stuff, but. He wasn't bound to doing things the right way, quote unquote. And so when Eddie came along as a student at Jean Jacques, Jean Jacques didn't bind him to doing it the way it's always done. Eddie's a very creative. He's a he's a psycho, and like in all the right ways, and some of the wrong ways too. But he's a psycho, man. I, I love him. But he's not going to follow a pattern. And Jean Jacques sees that, and he goes, "Oh yeah, you're be free to create and do it the way you want to do it." And so Eddie, at the top of the organization now, passes that on to all of us, and so we get to kind of do it how we want to do it, man. My jujitsu don't look very much like Eddie's in a lot of ways, and uh, and that's a we consider that a good thing, you know. Yeah. Rather than a well, you don't really do it the way my grandfather did it. Well, that's right. I yeah. don't. Yeah. So. Um, you wouldn't say that his craziness, because like he he believes in some conspiracy theories. Uh, or, all of the conspiracy theories, like the flat Earth conspiracy theory, for example, believes it. Do you sh- ever struggle to remove that from the instruction that you receive from him? Does that make sense? Do you ever? Yeah, struggle? no, no, I don't struggle with it at all. Okay. Just like I. So like Pearl Jam's my favorite band, right? Okay. You like Pearl Jam? Great, yeah, Pearl man. Pearl Jam's my favorite. Oh, they're great. But you remember when they were, when Bush, I think, was running for re-election, when second Bush was running for re-election? Like, they were so anti-Bush and all that stuff. I don't know if you remember all that stuff. But they were very anti, and I didn't, I don't even care about politics at all. But it didn't make me like their songs, more or less, because they had a certain political stance. Sure. I don't care, just play daughter dude you're right, you're you know right, what i'm saying right. like just play the song it makes no difference to sure, me sure sure and i don't discredit um somebody's um area of expertise just because i disagree with them somewhere else you know what i mean mm-hmm. that doesn't make any sense to me yeah that's like a really uh narrow way it's a real small way of thinking i think but i do think a lot of people do that yeah uh, i think a lot of people in the jujitsu community do that with eddie oh uh, he doesn't like the gi and so he's controversial I don't listen to him. Well, you might have missed out on some great stuff. He thinks the earth is flat. He's an idiot. Don't listen to anything he says about jujitsu. Dude, they're not related. 
But in a lot of ways, the thing that makes him so great at jujitsu is what leads him to think that way with other things because he just will not accept the straight answer. Like whatever, whatever the common answer is, he just won't say, yes, I'll take that. It doesn't mean he won't come to that eventually, but he won't just outright accept whatever the standard truth is. He just doesn't accept that. Like, well, okay, you say that's the truth. Let's have a look at it. And I think that uh, there's a great lesson to be learned there, and that is you can learn lessons from anybody. You know, you, you, yeah. you can close yourself off to, to learning and bettering yourself. Or you can find a way to learn and better yourself and get and get a little bit of knowledge from from anybody in any situation if uh, if you're open to it. So that's something that's definitely been uh, my world uh, going through this jujitsu thing, man. And uh, you are opening doors globally through jujitsu. It's amazing, and uh, just keep crushing it, man. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. I hope you uh, hope you had a good time. Uh, absolutely destroying me. <laughs> I I feel like I, I'm I'm about to Ralph, so we should probably wrap this thing up, man. <laughs> you are such a kind guy. You're a, you have a great environment here on the mat. I highly recommend anybody that's in the area come check it out, man. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna make some friends. You're gonna meet some cool people. Uh, you're gonna push yourself. You're gonna better yourself. And, uh, yeah, man, I was definitely nervous about approaching you to do this. So thank you again for doing it. And, uh, I still haven't worked up the guts to ask Anders or Walt. So, uh, we'll see if I can get, dude, uh, I'm there every Tuesday and Thursday morning. Just come. Okay. Just come. Don't (laughs) even ask. Just come. All right, man. Dude. Awesome. Very cool. And that Spartan fitness, Mm -hmm. I've never been inside, but they, it seems like they run a very cool, cool thing. It's a lot different than the way we do it here. It's definitely a lot different than the way you do it at George's place. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) That's what I hear, man. It's an environment. It's an interesting environment, but it's very fun. (laughs) It's a, it's a locker room is what it is. Sure. I'm only in there dealing with like the guys who are competitors. Yeah. So I don't get, I don't ever, actually have never been to one of the regular classes. Sure. Sure. So, but uh, they got what, like 600 people walking through the doors around there. It's insane. Wow. Yeah. Fully staffed all the time. Really nice facility. And, uh, but the pro practices are serious. Yeah. I was watching, uh, Walt Harris's story today and he's at Spartan and he's like, I'm the and there's a little kid like right there in the <laughs> Dude, background. it's madness at all times. <laughs> you should hear some of this I'm stuff. Like, there's a little kid right there. <laughs> he was talking to the kid, bro. <laughs> <laughs>that's it for this week's episode and this week's featured nonprofit is the Jimmy Hale Mission Jimmy Hale Mission is a family of Christian based ministries that are focused on the needs of the poor and the hurting since its humble beginnings in 1944 as a storefront chapel Jimmy Hale has grown into a multifaceted ministry including a homeless shelter for men a shelter for women and children after school Bible clubs recovery programs and learning centers find more info donate and volunteer by going to JimmyHaleMission.com and coming up I've got some great guests lined up for some future episodes, including a former White House insider, a yoga studio owner, and a man who is using his second chance at life to inspire others. New episodes premiere every Thursday, and you can find all the episodes and all the links at my website, Adler.tv. Quick update on my mile a day challenge. Uh, I'm all caught up on my miles for all my miles for every day. I did miss a few days here and there, but uh, I didn't let that make me quit this whole thing, you know? Uh, So if you have something that you wanted to do this year and you kind of screwed up and you missed a couple days or it's just not happening, uh, every day is a new day. The key is not give up. So anyways, thanks for watching. See you next week.